Hey friends, it's Brian, and um, the project I'm going to work on on my F-350 today is I'm going to disconnect the temporary fuel supply and patch back into the main tank and then get it started again. So, uh, I really don't know how old the fuel in the tank is, but it can't be older than the fuel that came out of the bus. So, it's not a very picky diesel as long as you feed it fuel and oil. It should run. Yeah, famous last words. Anyway, so... Without further ado, let's get on to that. And then I'm gonna make a bunch of other videos today on different things that I'm working on in the truck. I got a lot to do. I rescued this from a field in, at a farm in Texas. Uh, and um, at any rate, check out the playlist. Be sure to check out the links in the description as well. If there's anything I use that's special to this particular video, I'll put those links in there. Thanks so much. So the old fuel hose is there and we're gonna remove it. So I want to take a second to talk about tools because having the right tools makes it a lot easier to work on stuff. So this headlamp, I'll put a link to in the video. And then these lights are the only ones I found. <coughs> Allergies suck. Um, they have a magnet base. They have a clamp that goes around pipes. Um, this is the only light I found like this. Charges with USB and has several brightness settings. I bought these for doing pest control work, specifically bee removals, but they're really, really handy for working on vehicles. So I'll put a link in the video and then hose clippers make life much, much simpler. Um, so anyway, let's get under here and get this old hose out. Um, we're gonna be installing a check valve. Um, there was one that came with the truck, but it, I don't know how old it is, so it's getting replaced. All right, so. First things first, let's get some light in here. And this is what's great about these is it will really just light up the area you're working in. And because they'll clamp to just about anything, it makes it, and they're on swivel bases, it makes it much easier to get light where you need it when you're. All right, so here's the old hose. And I'm going to need a pair of pliers to get it loose, so let me go get those. Alright. So I'm sorry, the uh, angle is probably not the best. Thank <sighs> you. 
this shit's impossible to reach. So the problem is it's not secure. Every time you touch it, it moves. Oh, here we go. All right, it's out. Piece of shit. So that's what's left of it. Definitely time for replacement. All right, so now that we have um, gotten this where we want, we're going to start installing the fuel filter. This isn't, or not fuel filter, this is a fuel check valve. Life is simpler if you think through how you're going to make these connections. And that's going to put that there where I can get to it. So. And one of the things I've done is I've tightened this up where it'll still go on, but it's not real loose where it'll fall off. And then I think I'm going to do this from above and I'm going to let you guys watch from down here.
Okay. So. Now we need to figure out how we're going to do this part. So I think we're going to bring this down and just make a gentle loop. Um, this is not intended to be permanent. I don't really like that loop, but this will work for the moment for what I'm doing. be startable at this point yep so we should be startable let me see if this will talk back in here it will so I think that's okay I don't like it but I don't I don't like anything to rattle so I'm gonna zip tie that right there let me go get a zip tie I'll be right back. out to have a blanking plate made. cable rattling either so I'm gonna zip tie it rattles create chafing chafing creates leaks and shorts neither of which you really want happening if you want a reliable vehicle all right so that's that down here let's get out from under here and get it started all right so I expect to have to bleed it from the Schrader valve here um, but let's just see what happens
to deal with whatever was between it and the tank. And we have no idea which tank select is selected. start a rest for a few minutes so I'm not getting any fuel and I suspect that this fuel tank selector valve is part of the problem so let me figure out how to get this out of here So this is essentially like a power window. It's an AB selector. find the pin out for this so I can test it without guessing and I'll be right back all right so I went and got the manuals so I have an e9 TB which is not one of the options but I have an e7 TB that's an option e9 T maybe that replaced it so what we should have is either one and two or two and three should be positive. And connector one is there. So let's let's just start with that. Where's ground? Let me get a clip over it. This is a ground clip. And let's verify we've got ground.
Okay, so that should be positive. Some voltage on two. Let's see, we got we got going on a one. Nothing. shorted if we're on the rear and that's what looks like the problem is four one two three four thirteen volts Switch and see if it changes. So we're just going to do this the easy way. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen this and take it down um, and test it. Alright, so it's not 7 sixteenths, I'll be right back. Alright, it is a 10 millimeter.
Oops, it's the wrong side. All right, it's a 15 millimeter socket on the nut on the inside. Pull this piece of shit out of here. Quick release my ass. here huh. all right who knew so there's some kind of a little plastic key <sighs> clearly missing from the other ones that's probably part of the problem I'm letting my hands rest Let's go bench test this. All right, so if we put power to these terminals, in one direction we get the front, and in the other direction we get the back. So we're just going to test it and see if the valve moves. OK, so that's one direction.
So we got a dead valve. Um, that's a $60 part, but that's as far as we'll get it today. Um, thanks for watching. So that's how to, and again, we've just got to work our way through the fuel system until we get to the point where we have something we trust. On the subject of trust, I don't completely trust that little battery jumper thing, so I'm going to just use a real battery. Alright, so that's one way. That's the other. Nothing. Alright, so yeah, we have a dead we have a dead component here. These are notorious for failing. I don't see any oh, I might be able to get it open here. Let's get a screwdriver. Hold on, there's an easier way to do this. Uh, one more screw, right? Almost. Oh, there you go. See if we can figure out why this wasn't running. And for another little quick motor test. Bad brushes. No big deal. Now we know why this wasn't working. It was the motor after all. And that answers that question. Um, I don't recommend using the screwdriver that I used because this screwdriver will um, is unreversible. Yeah, it's got bad brushes because it has to be started by hand. So there you go. That's what's wrong with that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my uh, exploratory surgery and finding the real answer to why that valve wasn't working.